Praise the Lord. I tell you what, it's raining outside, but it's raining up in here too. <laughs> Come on. Because the Spirit of God is in this place. Hallelujah. As you know, this is the part of our service where we continue with our worship and giving into the kingdom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we get into uh, the message or the scripture reading, you know, last week we was talking about uh, being kingdom citizens in the kingdom of God who honor and worship our king. Okay. We was talking about when we give a gift to the king, our heart and our attitude is attached to it. Amen. So the Lord wanted me to keep the, keep the kingdom going, the kingdom culture going. So the scripture reading today will be coming from Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And it says here, but seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Talking about the kingdom. Now, when it says seek ye first the kingdom, it's saying seek ye first God's way of doing things, or when you say or kingdom culture. And when it talks about righteousness, it talks about the standards and realities of God. But the Lord said, when you understand seeking first the kingdom, understanding the culture, he said, in the culture of the kingdom, there's kingdom principles that will produce kingdom benefits. Do you understand? So when you talk about uh, giving, when you talk about tithing, offering, those are principles. When you talk about alms, which is the Bible teaches about giving to the poor, those are principles. But he says kingdom benefits. Now, one of the greatest benefits of the kingdom is you get to speak over your gift with the king decreed. Do you understand? You get to speak over your gift with the king decreed. Now, here's the revelation. The greatest gift that you can give a king is yourself. Watch this. Because when you give yourself to the king, the king has complete ownership of the gift, you. Now you get to speak over yourself with the king decree. Now I'm the head and not the tail. Now I'm above and not beneath. Because you're no longer yourself, you belong fully to the king. Am I talking right? Hallelujah. Now when you understand kingdom culture, given. When you understand kingdom culture, given. He said, when, you, when I have full possession of the gift. He said, that's why you give me praise. He don't belong to you. That's why you give me glory. It don't belong to you. He says, so when you understand giving in the ministry, anything that extends from you is not yours anyway. He says, so when you understand the kingdom culture, your brain will shift from kingdom culture to taking care of kingdom business. Come on. He said, you'll shift from going kingdom culture to taking care of kingdom business. You, you, understand, you follow what I'm saying? It's a gift exchange. He gave you the gift, Jesus Christ. It's a gift exchange. So when you gave yourself as a gift to the king, he has complete ownership of you. In Jesus' name. Father God, I gave you wisdom. Hallelujah. At this time, we're going to have our usher. No, at this time, if you need an envelope, raise your hands. Ink pen, raise your hands. And the ushers, uh, one on your left and one on your right. Hey. And then while they're passing this out, let me, let, me, let, me, let me just speak on this too. The culture of the kingdom goes with you everywhere you go. I asked the Lord a question. I said, Lord, if we understand the kingdom culture, how do we take it with us? He said, you take the culture of the kingdom on your job given, in your ministry given. You take it with you because you always move as if you are in the presence of a king. So it's nothing to give because you are in the presence of a king because the king has complete ownership of the gift. Come on, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just remember, there's many ways to give. You can text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. You can cash out dollar sign FIT KINGDOM. And also you can donate from your bank account at fftkgm.org. I'm going to say that one more time. You can give by texting, the word, texting to GIVE to 804-348-8300. You can cash out the dollar sign Fit Kingdom, and you can donate from your bank account at, to fftkgm.org. Amen. Are y'all ready? Repeat after me. Say, because I am a sower, God multiplies my seed. Because I believe, I receive what God has for me. Because I am good ground, I never lack. 
Because I live by faith. I prosper in what I do. Because I'm a curse breaker. My family is blessed. Because I walk in victory, I am a winner. Because I'm a lender, I am not a borrower. Because God is, so am I in this earth. Because I give, I receive. Good measure. Pressed down. Shaken together. Running over. Therefore, men. Given to my bosom. Father, according to your word, I have sown a financial seed. Therefore, I take lordship over my financial harvest. Financial harvest, come forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look for your ushers to the left and to the right. And while the ushers are assisting you at this time, we're going to have our apostle to come out and bring out the word of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hello, everyone. Hello, beautiful people. You guys are some good looking people. How are you guys doing today? You guys look amazing. How do you feel? I want you to say with me, good morning, good morning. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah, I want you to, let's welcome, let's welcome the, the, the person who is here in the form of Jesus. Say, good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. I, am I am here to receive from you, receive from you. Everything, everything that you have for me. Have for me. I, am I am in position to receive from you. Receive from you. Holy Spirit. Holy Good morning. Good morning. Isn't that wonderful? You guys look amazing. You really, really do. Look at someone and say, you look beautiful. Come on, look at someone else and say, you're beautiful. <laughs> say, you're beautiful. Praise God. You guys have a seat. Have a seat. Look, uh, what I want to do now, I want to... Um, I want to release the children uh, and the teens to uh, Children and Teens Church. Leave your cell phones here with your parents, please, children and teens. And Father, as our children and teens go out to learn, Father, we thank you that they are in position to hear from you. We thank you that they're going to experience you in a supernatural way. We bless you. We bless you and bless our children. Keep them safe. Keep them covered. Hey, nephew. What's up, nephew? Keep them protected. Let me hit him for a second. Let me hug him for a second because I ain't hug him today. Come here, nephew. Give me a hug, man. Yes, nephew. Hey, give me a hug. Give me a hug. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, go back to... Ah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> That's my nephew. I love him. Praise God. I want to pass out our certificate of partnership. Ashley, Ashley Adams and Christopher Jacob, please. Ashley Adams and Christopher Jacob. Clap, clap, clap. Ashley, thank you so much for partnership. It is truly a blessing. You are a sweet soul. We go, listen, we enjoy having you. We are here for your growth and your betterment. And anything we can do within our power to see you grow, we are here for that. Thank you for trusting us, okay? God bless you. God bless you. Hey, um, there's a couple of things. Uh, after service today, can you guys just sit back for a second? Just don't leave. I want to share some things with you. It won't be long. It'll be brief. All right? Uh, and uh, also, uh, moving forward, I'm going to start service at 10 o'clock. I have to because the worship time and everything is being extended. And I don't want to feel rushed. So uh, I, think, I think for me, it's going to be some wisdom to start at 10 o'clock. That 1010, 10, we did it for three years. But, you know, it's time to change 1010 10 to 10 o'clock. <laughs> so moving forward, moving forward, we're going to do service at 10 o'clock because I just need the, the time so I don't feel rushed. I don't want to rush Holy Spirit, but you guys know that this is not our space, right? So we're here for a limited time. So until God provides that space, uh, I just need to use some wisdom because I don't want to cut off the worship as Holy Spirit is moving. That's important, right? Because I'm a worshiper too. I was back there worshiping. And if it's up to me, we can still keep that going, right? So what I want to do is just use some wisdom and uh, start at 10 o'clock moving forward. Is that okay? Amen. Okay, praise God. Uh, let me see. Let me make sure. Is this not on? All right. So um, I'm excited about today's teaching. We, uh, we've been speaking all year about salvation. 
uh, we've been speaking about the seed. And um, I tell you, I, I love what God is doing uh, with the seed. Are you guys enjoying all that you're hearing and learning yes. regarding the seed? Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to go we're going to go deeper uh, today. Let me see here. We're going to uh, speak about creating your environment. But before uh, that happens, I want to go into a word of prayer. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of the sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Father, let everyone see that you are God and I am your son. Put your grace on me as I speak to your children. None of me and all of you. I decrease that you may increase. Holy Spirit, do a mighty work today. Let us lift up the name of Jesus. Let us showcase the lordship of Jesus. And I thank you for miracle signs and wonders. We thank you for miracle signs and wonders. We thank you that uh, your angels are here to minister to us. We thank you, Father God, for breakthrough. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you guys to stand together, please. I want to uh, confess, uh, united we stand. This is important. And it says, uh, repeat after me. We come together, we come together to, grow, to grow, heal, heal be, empowered, be empowered, and secure, and secure the, next the next generation success. success. We're just not meeting. This is why we come together. To grow, heal, be empowered, and secure the next generation's success. Repeat after me. Our Father, Our Father in, heaven, in heaven, holy be your name. Be your, name. Your, kingdom come. your kingdom come. Your will be done, will be done. On, earth, on earth as it is in heaven. Is in heaven. Give us this day, us this day our, daily our daily bread. And forgive us our debts forgive us our as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us not lead into us temptation. Into but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at someone and say, Jesus loves you and so do I. Come on, Jesus loves you and so do I. Jesus loves you and so do I. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Would you guys, have a seat, thank you. Would you guys do me a solid favor if you don't mind? Would everyone here and my family out there in social media, would you guys please do me a solid favor and press the share button so that the world can hear this amazing message that we are going to uh, have today. Our message is called, entitled rather, Creating Your Environment. That's our message title. So I'm asking everyone here and those who are online to please do me a favor and partner with me and help me to evangelize by sharing this wisdom, this insight. Amen. All right. I shared last week that my spiritual father, Bill Winston, uh, had a statement that really spoke to me loudly and clearly. And I want to share that again. He said, whoever has revelation will run the earth. That's what he said. He said, whoever has revelation will run the earth. And when I heard that, that spoke to me so loudly because that is so true. And when he's talking about revelation, it simply means whoever can see the world from God's viewpoint, whoever can see as God sees, whoever can hear as God hears, is going to dominate the world. Okay? People who are not dominating the world is, are, are people who are seeing according to the world and not seeing according to God. Okay? And so what I want to do is I want to expound on that some more. Okay? Um, I tell you, I spend so much time with God that I hear and I see everything. It is, it is, it, it, I can't turn it off. I see things that the normal person don't see. I hear everything. I can see through a person. And sometimes I, do, I wish I could not, but my, my level of discernment is on a thousand. And the reason is, it's because I tapped into revelation. Okay. And so here's the thing. God will show you people and things not to uh, have you not like people or be nasty or rude to them when you when they when when God shows you something is wrong. But when you mature enough, when you, when God shows you that you go into prayer, you start to pray because you understand that this person is really operating outside of design. 
right? So when a person operates outside of design and they are acting outside of God's will, then what we have to do is use discernment to bring them back in. Okay, because your prayer will be the thing to move and move on someone's heart. God would use your prayer. He would use your maturity to bring someone in who was out. You, you follow? So I see and I hear everything. You know, and I tell you, sometimes I'll be like, man, not today. Because sometimes I want to break from it. You know, I was home one day watching a basketball game and I saw the game. I saw the end of the game. I saw who lost the game. I saw who won the game. I saw who made the winning shot. I could have played. I played the whole thing out. And I'm watching this, minding my business, and I'm sitting, laying in the bed, and I said, okay, oh, my God, Minnesota versus Golden State Warriors. That's my team, Golden State Warriors. And I'm watching this thing, right? Yeah, I see you, right? Okay. I'm watching the game. I promise you. I'm watching the game, and, and, and I hear they're going to lose by a three-point shot. I said, oh, my God. All right? So he says, I, I hear Carl Anthony, Carl Anthony Towns is going to shoot a three-point shot from the top of the key. They're going to lose the game. So I'm watching this thing, and I'm yelling, hey, play defense. Get him. Get. I'm, I'm screaming at the TV. I'm, out, I'm having an out-of-body experience. Just the way he described it is just the way it happened. And I laid in the bed looking at the ceiling saying, what is going on? And he says, where I'm taking you, you're going to have to recognize my voice. You're going to have to know this is me. So I'm giving you this to build up your confidence to know how to hear my voice. The other day, uh, when Tank, Tank Davis fought, I knew that he was going to win in the seventh round. I knew it. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm minding my business, but God is releasing discernment. It's not in the notes. Pull up for me Deuteronomy chapter uh, 29, verse 29 in the New King James Version. I just want to, can I just flow for a little bit? I want, I want to share some things here. It's not in the notes, but I'm just, can I just flow as I hear it? All right, so Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29 in the New King James Version. Because where we're going today, family, if we're not hearing from God, we're going to be in trouble. Okay, we're going to need discernment in this day and time, all right? And so I'm talking to you about creating the atmosphere. And let, give me a thumbs up once you have it so I know um, that you have it. No, I'm talking, thank you for your thumb. I need their thumb in, in the media team. <laughs> but I appreciate your thumb, though. You engaged, Megan. I love that. You got it? Okay, look what it says. You, we need you on the team over there. You want to go over there? Okay, talk to them over there. They need you. Praise God. Actually, Megan, won't you take yourself over there right now and see what they got going on with your smart self? Won't he do it? I said, won't he do it? Come on now, Megan. Give us some love. Hallelujah. Look what it says here. The, look what it says. The secret, listen, the secret things belong to who? But those things which are revealed belong to who? And who else? How long? See, so there, there's some secret things that God will reveal to you to give you the upper hand, give you the ways to succeed and dominate in the earth. You got it? And so, so where we're heading to, we're heading into this place. Now, what God is showing me is once we tap into this, we, we tap out of the world system. Okay? So what God wants to do is he wants to get us off of this system and get us on his system. Because that's the original plan. Right. The original plan is to be on God's system and not, and not the world system. OK. Now, I, listen, I want to share something with you, and I believe this is going to be powerful. I made the decision to totally disconnect from this system. There's a lot going on in the world. Can you sense it? The Internet, news, media, it's enough to drive you absolutely nuts. Information coming at you a thousand miles a second. Not even a minute now. It's a second. I mean, you are getting stuff bombarded all day long. And I'm telling you, I need to disconnect. So I made the decision in my alone time in the last week or so. I've been speaking to God and I said, Lord, I don't like this. I'm feeling stressed. I feel like I'm being pulled all over. He said to me, disconnect. Okay, so I'm going to share with you. Okay, I said, Lord, how do I disconnect? How do I disconnect from this while living in here? He said, simple. He says, don't live according to the system. Live according to the seed. That's good. Amen. 
Okay? Now, this is what I want to share with you. I made the decision to no longer be concerned with money. I made the decision to no longer be concerned with uh, my credit score. Now, pay attention, okay? I'm not saying that I'm not going to be a good manager over money. And I'm not saying that I would not do all I can to secure a good credit score. Okay? But no longer would money or credit score or these stipulations determine how I live. You, you follow me? Okay? Because truthfully speaking, you would never have what you need to live according to God independent from God. The system would never give you what you need so that you can truly live on a kingdom level. You, you'll never have it. You, your credit will never be good enough. You'll never have enough money to live according to the kingdom. You follow? And so what God showed me was, this is what he showed me. He says this. He says, I want you moving forward. This is how you're going to have peace in this world. I want you to disconnect and everything you need Find a seed and then sow it and I'm going to back it up. Amen. Let me explain to you. Okay. Let's say that I wanted to buy a new home. Thank you. Yep, perfect. So let's say I wanted to purchase, thank you, a new home. What I would do is, now listen to what I said. I said purchase. Buy it. No mortgage. I'm buying a house. I'm not doing mortgage. I'm buying a house. I'm not doing mortgage. I'm buying a house. I'm not looking for 30 years. I'm looking for 30 days. I, 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 see, the system says to go 30 years in a hole. But God says, I can do in 30 years what you allow me to do in 30 days. You follow? All right. So, he will come to me and say, I want you to take, for example... A thousand dollar seed. I want you to sow a thousand dollar seed to this person, to this organization. So I would sow the seed. That's my tangible proof of my faith. But that's not enough. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a scripture to back up what I just did. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Lord, I thank you for giving me houses that I did not build nor did I fill? So now I purchased the house because I was obedient to sow a tangible evidence of my faith and I'm watering it by constant confession of the word. You got it? That's how you live according to the kingdom and tap out of the system. The problem is that we don't believe God can supply us with a half a million dollar house in 30 days debt free. We don't believe that. See, we don't believe that. We believe that we have to go through this channel and that channel. That is true according to them. But we're not living according to them. We're living according to the king. You follow? So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not financing nothing else. I'm tapping out. Anything I desire, anything, I, and I'm talking to you too, because this ain't for me only. He told me this. But it's going to take faith to... To, to, to step out of your comfort zone. You follow? We should not be comfortable tapping into something that is failing and has failed. That's the system. The system has failed. The system is failing. The system is designed to keep you and I in prison. I'm not doing that no more. I'm done. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be a good steward over what God gives me. It does not mean I'm not going to uh, make sure my credit is not intact. It does not mean that. It simply means, like Maurice stated, I am, the, 
I am the possession of the king and I trust him to take care of me. You follow? When you do that, you create an atmosphere that's conducive for the kingdom. Give me the image of the seed uh, that we spoke about last week. It says that seeds also have a seed coat, and it's called testa. The coat of the seed is called testa. And it protects from disease and insects. It says the seed coat also prevents water from entering the seed, which will initiate the germination process before the proper time. The process of seed germination is the resumption of active growth of the embryo so that it can become a plant. And so what we spoke about last week is that you have to be in the presence or a certain environment to protect your seed so that you can see the growth. You got it? So this is what we're doing. We're tapping out so that we can see the growth. You can't be a part of this, king, uh, this system and be a part of his kingdom and see growth. You got to choose which way you're going to go now. And see, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm going there. I'm not, I'm not doing this no more. I'm tapping out because if you stay connected to this world, it's going to drive you crazy. I'm telling you. You're not, you're not going to have enough money to buy it. You're not going to be smart enough to get it done. You're not going to have the credit enough to get You're not going to have it according to the world. But in the kingdom, we're all wealthy. Let me talk to you about the results of the right environment. In Genesis chapter 2, Adam was in the right environment. And Adam had the empowerment to name the animals, to speak and name the animals. He was in the right environment. This is what the right environment looks like. Thank you, media team. That's amazing. That's a good illustration. Give it up to the media team, please. This is what dominion looks like, where the man was able to tame the lions and, 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 and everything. Let me see that image again, please. And everything was subject to the man. He's leading. He's guiding. He's showing the animals where to go and what to do. And there's no murder, no killing. This is dominion. You got it? But this only happens when you are in the right environment. Okay, so you can have this in your house. You can have this in schools. You can have this in the workplace. Like my wife said, when you come here, God comes because you're here. We're not meeting God here. In other words, God's not waiting in the building for you to show up. God shows up because you came. You follow? So this is the most powerful day in the week right here. Why? When you have enough people bringing the same environment, what can happen when you have 40, 50, 100, 1,000, 10,000 people bringing this environment? Matthew chapter 6, thy kingdom come, thy will be on as it is. That's what it looks like. You can bring, it is your responsibility to bring this everywhere you go. This is the environment. Now, when you are in the wrong environment, this same picture changed. Because no longer is he able to control. Now look, the results of the wrong environment. Look, he's running. He went from being bold to running. I love this image. Thank you again, media team. You're doing a wonderful job. This shows what the wrong environment looks like. And many Christians are in this environment versus the latter. 
This is the reality of many saints of God. They are in this environment. They're trying to figure it out. They're covering themselves with fig leaves. They're hiding from God instead of being bold and naked and having dominion over everything in existence. You follow? Okay. So, how do we get this? How do we get the environment to be conducive? And that's where I'm going to take you to now. You got to pay attention. Because this is a very important teaching. The person who has the right environment controls everything. For the sake of time, I'm not going to read it. But Matthew chapter 6, Jesus tells us that a prophet is not without honor in his own country. So that simply means that every environment is not conducive for you. I want you to pay attention now. Jesus, God in the flesh, was not welcomed in every environment. So he left Na he left Capernaum and went to Nazareth because he was not received there. He was not received in his hometown. So he had to leave his country and go somewhere else. So you're responsible to know where you will thrive in. You should not be in a place where you don't thrive. If you don't thrive there, leave. I say it this way. If a person does not appreciate your presence, bless them with your absence. You follow? Okay. Now, this is what I want you to see. Jesus is the example of the environment being conducive for the miracle, the breakthrough, the growth. So let's study him for the moments we have together. In John chapter 10, verse 30, in the New King James Version, look what he says. What does he say? Okay. So in Jesus' imagination, in Jesus' soul, in his spirit, he says, no matter what I am dealing with, no matter where I am, no matter what I'm going through, I and the Father are one. No matter what you are experiencing, no matter what you are going through, no matter what you are dealing with, how would it be if you said, I and the Father of one. How would it be for you if that was your reality? That you tapped into something that's saying, no matter my circumstances, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I hear, no matter what I feel, I am one with the Father. What would that do to your environment? What would it do to your environment that you will look at something that's going against you and your reality is, even though naturally this is going against me, I and the Father are one. What would that do for your environment? Why do you think Jesus operated at a dimension that people don't comprehend? Why? Because he never saw himself independent from. He never saw himself different or independent from the father. So that kept him in a heavenly environment, even though hell was breaking loose. Imagine, I'm hearing an echo. It's throwing me off. I don't need an echo, please. It's throwing me off. Imagine seeing yourself 
one with the Father. What does the Father look like? Because that determines your atmosphere, your environment. The reason why Jesus was able to perform miracles, and let me take that back, he never performed a miracle. He never, Jesus never performed one miracle, just as you can never perform a miracle. He didn't do it. I know y'all shocked. Jesus never performed a miracle. He set the environment for the miracle, but he never did it. He set the atmosphere for the miracle, but he never did it. So just as Jesus set the atmosphere for the miracle, it is your job to set the atmosphere for the miracle, but it's not your job to try to figure out how the miracle would happen. I'm going to prove it to you. Let's go to John chapter 14, verse 19 to 11, verse 9 to 11. I want to teach because this is important. So I want you to get this. I'm trying to sow this into you because I want you to unplug from what you may be plugged into. Say, this is my my way. Come on, repeat that. This is my way way. to to unplug. We're going to put a debt. We're going we're gonna to put a debt to this whole thing today. We're going to unplug. Jesus said to him, talking to Philip, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen who? I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you. He never saw himself. He always saw. People trying to figure out how did Jesus do this. I'm telling you, I'm showing, I'm, I'm showing you. He never saw him. He saw. Everything that you're going through, every person you're connected with that you should not be connected with. If you ever change what you saw, you would break the connection. What breaks the connection is that you no longer see yourself the way you once saw yourself. You see yourself as the Father sees you. And so what happens is things and people that are connected to you will fall off unless they change also their image of themselves. So the commonality is you don't see what he sees. And therefore your atmosphere is bringing hellish people and hellish experience your way. But as soon as you see yourself from a different playing field, you elevate. And what I'm seeing is you become that eagle, right? And eagles soar. They, they, they up there. They don't roam with, and see, I'm not talking down on people, but they don't roam with pigeons. E- eagles see things from a different perspective, a different viewpoint, because they, they, they're higher up. They're not here. They're here. You, you follow? So there's an eagle perspective or eagle vision. You You follow? And the eagle perspective or the eagle vision says, it doesn't say that you're less than me or I'm less than you or I'm better than you. No, it says that I see myself as the father sees me. I only do what I see my father do, right? He who has seen me has seen who? The father. So how can you say, show us the father? Listen. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is where? In me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells where? Does what? Jesus never did a miracle. 
Jesus never did. I know we said Jesus opened blind eyes and deaf ears. No more than I open a blind eye or deaf ear. Listen, when I pray for someone and their eyes open or their ears open, did I do it? Who did it? Okay, so when he did it, who did it? It ain't no different. But for me to pray for someone and, 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 and experience a blind eye or deaf ear being open, I'm telling you this, I'm not here when that happens. See, in order for that to happen, I must, I must now connect to the power source. Listen, when I see someone with a blind eye or deaf ear, if I stay here, I'm going to feel as if, man, how am I going to do this? So if I think, man, how am I going to do this? I am in the wrong environment for the miracle. Okay, so what I have to do is see the blind eye, see the deaf ear, and now, even though I am physically here, I got to have my soul and my spirit tapping into the Father. What did I do? I changed the environment. I left earth. And I tapped into heaven. And now when I tap into heaven, heaven filters through me. But as long as I am seeing me as the one doing it, I never tapped into the who does the work in You can create anything you desire, anything you need, anything you want. If you shift the, it's the environment. It's the, see, as long as you stay here, you're limited. You need some money. You ain't got it. You need this credit score. It ain't high enough. Do you not know that God would supersede all of that if you tapped into the, into heaven's environment? Let me tell you, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Do you need good credit in heaven? How much money do you need in heaven? So, if you tapped into heaven's environment, do you have the money and do you have the credit score? So could it be that the thing between you and the thing is that you're still in the wrong? I was having a problem with my finger. And I was backstage. And I said, well, that problem is here. But it's not there. And I said, as long as I stay here, the problem's going to live. But what if I tap out of here and tap into there? What's going to happen? Boom! I got healed. Why? I tapped out. I no longer allowed the limitations, stipulations of here to tell me what's going on up there. Let's go to John chapter 5, verse 19, please. Is this okay? Are you guys, is this, is this sinking in? Praise God. Then Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he, but what he, but what he, who do, who's doing it? For whatever he, come on now, the son, 
He, he was never, see, the reason why Jesus produced at, a, at the dimension that he produced in, he was always in the environment of production. Okay. In this place, you're going to have to toil. You're going to have to, you know, sweat. You're going to have to, I'm, I'm talking about, man, break your back to get it done. You follow? But when you tap into the environment, now your seed is in the right place for production. You have, you have spiritual seeds on the inside of you. Every one of us have godly spiritual seeds. All of us. And there's a seed inside of you for anything you need to live. According to God. But that seed cannot grow. If the environment is not conducive for the growth. That's the reason why Jesus, Holy Spirit, I give you praise. Okay, I got it. Whew. Jesus is known as the Word. And in Luke chapter 8, verse 11 says that the parable is this. The seed is the Word of God. So Jesus is not only the Word, he's also the seed. Are you guys tracking with me? Okay. All right. So what made the seed produce is when God saw Jesus, he saw Jesus in seed form. You got it? So God the Father saw, saw God the Son in seed form. You follow? So the reason why Jesus the seed produced it's because he was in the environment of the Father. Jesus would not have produced if he was not in the Father's environment. So the reason why he produced, the reason why he walked on water, the reason why he opened the blind eye, the reason why the deaf ear was opened, the reason why the, the dead was raised, the reason why he fed the multitudes with two fishes and five loaves was because in the environment he tapped into, which is the spiritual environment of God, the seed produced Whatever the lack was in the earth. <laughs> you tap into this, your life will change instantaneously because you were created for production I can prove it to you in Genesis chapter 1 he says be fruitful and multiply you follow that means production you follow so he would not tell you to bear fruit and multiply if you could not but the reason why people are not being productive and multiplying is, it's because they don't lack what they need. They lack the environment for production. I'm going to show it to you. Let's go to Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 30, please, in the New King James Version. Matthew 14, 
I had skipped around, so it's in there. Matthew 14. Now, when you see this, this is groundbreaking. Matthew 14. Janet, you tapping in, aren't you? You tap. See, that's what I'm talking about. See, see, when y'all, when y'all pull, Holy Spirit gives more. And she, you pulling. See, that's the reason why I no longer, I'm making a request. I no longer want to see people spread out. I'm just, can I make a request? I'm, I'm requesting for people to sit together. Because when the energy is together, then you guys pull more from me. And when you pull more from me, there's more I can give you. But when it's spread out, the energy is, is all over the place. And so what I need, what I need, that's the reason why, if I could be transparent, that's the reason why on many of Sundays, I'm almost falling off the stage. Because I'm trying to get as close to you as possible. You follow? No, listen, listen. And the reason why I want to be close to you is because the more you pull on me, the more he gives me to give to you. But when you are separated, I can't, I can't give it to you. Right? So I really need you guys to sit together. And let's stop sitting from the front to the back. And let's trust God to fill up whatever's empty in the back. But I need people in the front. Because if you could tell, if I come any close, I'm falling off the stage. But I'm trying to get this that you have. It's an exchange. I, got, I get what you have. And I give you what he gives me to give to you. You, you got it? So I, I need us to, to, to do some things different because all of this is spiritual. At the Last Supper, they did, they did not sit in different places. They sat in close quarters. So in other words, when you want to eat from God, he wants his children to sit together. When he fed the multitudes in the, at, in, in the mountain, they didn't sit separate. They all sat together. There's an anointing when people sit together. That's why COVID was such a bad thing because they separated the anointing. Where two or three people are together, I am in the midst. But I, he wants to be in the midst of close quarters. When we move into our building, I would never be on the stage. I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be right there in front of you. Why? You got to feel this thing. I want to feel you. I want you to feel me. Can we feel each other? In the spirit realm. I love y'all. I'm telling you, I love you. And I hope, I hope you're getting this. Now I'm going to show you what I'm talking to you about. In Matthew chapter 14, verse 28 to 30, it says, And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. You got it? Now you got to be in some level of the right environment to do what Peter is about to do. I'm telling you that you try to walk on water if you want to. It ain't going to happen, Jack. Because now you're breaking the law that cannot be broken unless you in the spirit. See, laws can be broken as long as you're in the spirit. But you must be in the right environment to break a law that normally cannot be broken. You can't walk on water unless you break the law spiritually. You can't fall out of a building and land safely unless you break that law spiritually. Which means that it is God who is allowing you to walk on the water. And the angels who are holding you up so you won't dash your foot against a stone. My God, my God. Such revelation. Natural laws don't hold up with spiritual laws. Naturally, 
you need an 850 credit score. Spiritually, you could be at 450 and do just the same. <laughs> Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. What made him walk on water? He was in the atmosphere for the miracle. Now, who was there with him to create the atmosphere? Say Jesus. I'm trying to tell you. Just as, just as Jesus kept his eyes on the Father, you must keep your eyes on Jesus. So the atmosphere is conducive and Peter's walking on water and he's walking on the water. And as he walked on the water, he says, Peter went down and came down and out of the boat. He walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw, let me ask you a question. Did he not see before? He'd been seeing, but he was seeing spiritually. So this is the contrast from a person seeing spiritually to a person seeing naturally. When he saw spiritually, he did what he saw Jesus do. But listen to this. Jesus did what he saw his father do. So Jesus had his eyes on the Father and Peter had his eyes on Jesus. This is what I want you to see. No one looked at themselves Everyone looked at someone else. Because Jesus did not look at him. Jesus looked at the Father. So Jesus walked on water because he saw the Father walking on water. And Peter walked on water because he saw Jesus walk on water. But as soon as Peter checked his credit score, as soon as Peter checked his education level, as soon as Peter checked his bank account, as soon as Peter checked his color, as soon as Peter checked his record, as soon as Peter checked his, his father not being there, as soon as Peter checked his mother not there, as soon as Peter checked something else other than Jesus, the Bible says that Peter began to drown. As soon as he said my credit isn't good enough, he drowned. As soon as he said I'm a woman, he drowned. As soon as Peter says, I'm a black man, he drowned. As soon as Peter said, I used to be a drug addict, he drowned. He took his eyes off of Jesus and looked at a natural thing. But you can't do anything supernatural and look at the natural. And the Bible says that Jesus came immediately and picked them up and says, you of little faith. In other words, you saw what to do. You did it. And you chose to look at limitations and boundaries and not look at me as I looked at the Father. And the Bible says that later on in this chapter, the Bible says that the storm did not stop until they entered into the boat. Can I talk to you about that? 
Jesus did not stop the storm. Read it further in this chapter. He did not stop the storm because he's trying to show Peter, as long as I'm with you, the storm don't matter. He did not stop the storm. The storm kept going. But this time, look at me while the storm is going. And when he got into the boat, that's when the storm stopped. I got one more scripture and I'm done. I'm going to give you one more scripture, then I'll be, I'll be done. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I want to give you the simplest way to create the environment. I want to give you one scripture that would have you in the right environment 24-7, 366. I'm including leap year for those who want to know. No days off. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 in the NIV version, please. So, in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. How many of you know it's going to take an act of God for you to treat someone the right way after they tarnish your name? How many of you know it's going to take an act of God for you to bless that woman after she slept with your husband? How many of you know it's going to take an act of God for you to pray for that person who killed your family member? How many of you know it's going to take an act of God to put yourself in the position of what I like this done to me so I should not do this to them. Even though I, it feels justified to do it to them, I'm going to now activate the law where it says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It does not say do unto them who are good to you, who bless you. It says do to them as you want to be done to you, regardless of what has been done to you. That's an act of God. That is an act of God. You can't do it within your own strength. You can't go to a psychiatrist. You can't go to a life coach. The only person who can do that through you is Jesus. It's going to take a supernatural disposition to go to someone who purposely hurt you and say, you know what? I'm going to treat you as I desire to be treated. This, my brother and my sisters, is the golden rule in all of the Bible. There is not another rule in the Bible greater than that right there. Actually, that one scripture, isn't that Matthew 7, 12? Okay, 7 and 12 equals 19. And 19 is the number of faith. 19 in the Bible means faith. In other words, in order for that to happen, you're going to have to have some faith in God to do it. You follow? All right. Now. The only way to get this done is to make a decision to keep your eyes on Jesus 
why Jesus keeps the eyes on the Father. Now, here's the revelation. The reason why Jesus keeps his eyes on the Father is because Jesus could not do it within his own strength. He couldn't do it. He couldn't do it. Jesus couldn't do it. So he did it through the Father. Here is the powerful thing. Lord, have mercy. Jesus is in you. According to Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Christ in So, So here's the reality. You can't do it. It's Christ in you who does it. But what you need to do is create the environment conducive to let him do it. If you don't create the environment, then he's in you not doing nothing. He's in you mummified. He's in you arrested. But when you change the environment... And I'm telling you that if you embrace this scripture, you're, gonna, you're going to live a quality of life that you'll never understand. It'll have you blessing things that normally you will curse. And if you curse the thing, more than likely it's going to curse you. Ladies, when you curse your baby's father, you're not just cursing the man. You're cursing the seed that came out of the man. So you're also cursing the children. Men, when you curse the woman, you're not just cursing the woman, you're cursing what the woman carried. You're cursing the children. That's the reason why you want to start blessing things because you really don't know who and what you're cursing. I find myself at home. I'm unplugged. And I find myself at home. Would I like this done to me? No, I'm not going to do it to you. I get, I get hurt at times. Being here, this is, this is hard work. I mean, people hurt me. I mean, this, the, the level of betrayal and, and disrespect that I experienced over those I labored over, you don't have a clue. And what I have to do is pray for that person and love on that person and when I see that person treat that individual the same as if I would treat those who support me why because I'm following the golden rule and I'm not going to let nobody place me in hell heaven is a whole lot better that's the golden rule I challenge you this week moving forward as we go into June and do our 90 day better challenge I dare you to look at a thing and look at a person and say would I want that done to me don't look at the offense don't look at the hurt don't look at the pain don't look at what was done wrong look at yourself and say what I am about to do what I am about to say would I like that done to me? And if the answer is no, don't do it. Treat that person the way you desire to be treated. It's the golden rule of life that has heaven invading the earth. Father, I gave you wisdom. I gave you revelation. I gave you truth. Father, we are sensitive to the atmosphere. And this is the atmosphere of healing. If there's someone in here who is tired, now don't, don't, you got to hear me on this. Because nothing would change. I heard Creflo Dollar say this. Nothing would change until you are sick and tired of being sick and tired. So I'm not talking to those who are tired. I'm talking to those, even online, who are sick and tired of being sick and tired. If you're tired, I'm not talking to you. You're not there yet. You haven't, you haven't arrived yet. That's okay. Take your time and still be tired. But I'm talking to those who are sick and tired of being tired. If you find yourself in a position, if you are in a space in your life where you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, I need you here right now. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Up here right now. 
Only those who are sick and tired. I don't even know what it is. But if you are sick and tired of being sick and tired, I need you up here right now. I want to pray for you. Even those online. If you are in a space of being sick and tired, of being sick and tired, I'm not going to coerce you. I'm going to be here for 30 more seconds and I'm moving on. Because if not, you just stay where you at. I mean, I, I'm not going to curse you. This is for those who are sick and tired or being sick and tired. Is there two more people in here who are sick and tired or being sick and tired? I'm tired of my life. I'm tired of going back and forth. I'm tired of these voices. I'm tired of Satan having this way. I'm just tired. I'm tired enough of this. I'm tired of living below standard. I had enough. I'm tired of this. I'm not living the best life. I got to say in the matter, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. This is my last time saying it. Last time saying it. And this is your last chance to come down here. If you are a person in here who is sick and tired of being sick and tired, come down here now. Everything in life is a decision. Those online as well. Everything in life is a decision. There's nothing, absolutely nothing, you can do about your upbringing. There's nothing you can do about who raised you, who birthed you. And a lot of your circumstances, you had no say in. The rape happened and you had nothing to do with it. Your dad abandoned you. And a lot of us are victims of our upbringing. That is the reality. That's the truth. There is pain up here. There's pain also online. That is the reality. That's the truth. There's pain here. There's pain here. But what I've learned in life is perspective is everything. Now, if you see it from God's standpoint, we're going to be fine. But if you don't see it from God's standpoint, you'll be up here a thousand more times. Right? And so the Bible tells us that you must choose this day, the blessing or the curse. You got to choose this. Okay? Now, there's nothing you can do to change yesterday. But you have all power to change right now. And listen, listen. And it's a daily decision. I wake up every day with a daily decision of being changed. I am haunted at times about some things that happened in my life, some stupid decisions that I made that I cannot take back. If I can just go back, my one thing I'm going to ask the Lord when I meet him is, why did I not meet you sooner? Because if I did, if I did, I would not have done this and done that. That's my only beef with Jesus. Yeah, that's my only beef with, why not sooner? Okay, with that being said, though, I am living the rest of my days independent from that. So it's a decision. It is a decision. Decision. Here is where people miss it. It's not a one time decision. It is a daily decision. You go wake up tomorrow having to decide not to go back to yesteryear. Because if not, it's going to come back and haunt you. Now, my question to you here and those also online, do you really want to be delivered? Are you, are, you, are, you, are you truly sick and tired of being sick and tired? You sure? Look at me. Are you truly sick and tired of being sick and tired? 
Are you truly sick and tired of being sick and tired? You sure? This is what I want you to know. When you are truly sick and tired of being sick and tired, you break the commonality with the thing that makes you sick and tired. See, the reason why that thing has been on you and has not left you is you ain't tired enough. You're partnering with it. So the responsibility to break it is on who? It's on who? I, I can't hear you begging. It's on you. Not on, not on God. Now, give him the environment to help you to break it. Because you can't break it. But he needs the environment. Now, would you give him the environment for breaking? You will? Say, Lord. Say, Lord. I give you the environment to break what I am sick and tired over. No longer would I partner with the thing that has me sick and tired. Say, thing. Circumstance. Issues. Issues. I break it now. I I no longer longer hold on to you. you. I am having a funeral funeral. today. Today. I am liberated. liberated. I am free. free. Jesus Jesus paid the price price for my liberation. liberation. Thank you. you. I am no longer sick and tired. tired. According to your word, word. who the sun sets free free. is free indeed. Lord, may, may there be a refreshing, raise your hands, may there be a refreshing over this woman of God. We break what she's tired over. Let it be a refreshing, God. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her. Touch her, Jesus. Break. I command a break. A loosing now in the name of Jesus. Break, 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 break. Yep. Come on. Come on. Come on out. Yep. Come on out. Come on out. Yep. Come on. Come on. That's all right. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. Come on. Come on. It's all right. Come on. Break. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on out. Come on out. Let it go. Come on, release. Looser, 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 looser. <laughs> come on. Your seed needs the water, so tears is okay. It's okay. It's all right. Break. Come on out. It's all right. Let him minister to you, okay? Come on out. He loves you. He's wiping you clean right now. Yep. Light shine in her soul. Light be. Loose her in Jesus' name. All right. Praise God. Come on. Come on. Break. In the name of Jesus, fire. The fire of God. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her in Jesus' mighty name. Loose her. Loose her. Loose her. Break. 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 Anything that is not of God. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. Break. A breaking, 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 a breaking. The light of God, light through. Let your light shine, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, come on. We're breaking this off for you. Come on, right here. In Jesus' name, break. Break in Jesus' mighty name. Break. Fire of God, the fire of God. Release, 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 release. Fire of God, release. Break Breaking, 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 breaking. Go to the pit of her soul, Lord, and cleanse with your blood, with your blood, with your blood, with your blood, with your blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Give an image of freedom, Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. All right, hallelujah. Maurice, take them back there, minister to them in prayer, please. Gerald, you can go back there in prayer. Thank you. If there's anybody in here who does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if anybody in here wants to have a rededication to the Lord, 
Is anybody in here who does not know Jesus or want to have a rededication? You can come on down here now, and I'll pray for you as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Do you guys sense the strong spirit of God in here? Isn't this wonderful? Isn't this wonderful? Yep. All right. Praise God. Is there anyone in here who would say, you know what, man, I, I don't have a, a body that I'm really connected to. And I, I believe that this ministry is a good fit for me. I believe this ministry is authentic. There's an anointing here. I'll be in good hands here. If there's anybody here who's not a partner with this ministry and you would like to partner with this ministry, raise your hands. Is there anybody in here who's not a partner, even online? If you're online and you're not a partner with this ministry, you can go to the website, fftkgm.org forward slash join and join. It doesn't matter where you are. If you want to be connected, you can join that way. So is there anyone here who wants to partner with us who's not a partner? Okay, praise God. Come on. Anybody else? Is God speaking to you? Is God speaking to you about being a partner with us here in this ministry? Anybody else? Praise God. Anybody else? Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The, the, Lord, the Lord says, uh, he says, I'll, he, tell me your name. Chris. 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 The Lord says, look, Chris, I am going to renew the years that have been stolen. The Lord says that I'm going to uh, give you a, a new memory. The Lord says I'm going to give you a whole lot to smile over. The Lord says to re release your past. It, it doesn't have anything to do with you. He says, now, the Lord, I'm hearing the Lord says that I'm going to do a new thing in your life. You've been asking for that. And then you've been also asking to be connected with some authentic, real people. You've been asking that. Am I, am I hearing correctly? You've been saying, Lord, you know what? I'm tired of this church thing. Actually, you've been, you've been coming here just to test it out to make sure it was real. Am I, am I talking correctly? And something, and something, something happened today. To make you say, okay, this is real. This is real. I, this, this is what I, what I need to grow. You've been asking for that. And something was done today to make you say, this is what I need to grow. Right? I want you to know I got your back. We got your back. And anything we can do to, to help you to grow and point you in the right direction, we got you. We're here for you in every sense of the word, man. So thank you for partnership. And thank you for trusting us, okay? Make sure he signs, uh, yeah. go see Onika. Thank you so much, Chris. Yeah, Onika right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God for what he's doing here. I thank God, I thank God that he, uh, you know, he's mindful of us. He, 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 he loves us here. I can tell by, by, by what we're getting. You know, look, I'm going to tell you what, what Jesus said. It's not me, it's the Father and me who's doing the work. I can't take credit for it. It's not me at all. And I hope you guys feel that. I hope you guys sense that. Because the same God that's in me is the same God in you. And so what you're experiencing for me is also it's available to you as well. You just got to dig into it, right? So what we're doing here is giving you all you need to tap in. And so I want to thank you guys for trusting my wife and I. And, and believe me, we are just getting started. The best is yet to come. The best is upon us now. All right? Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to pray you guys out. Don't forget, I want to talk to you guys after service, okay? And so those online as well, thank you guys for trusting us, believing in us. Don't forget, uh, uh, next Sunday is first Sunday. We meet at 9 a.m. of prayer. But moving forward, service will start at 10 o'clock, all right? So raise your hands for uh, the blessing, please. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his shalom. That's his peace. Now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Repeat after me. Say, Father, Father thank, you thank you for blessing me indeed. Blessing me. Father, Father, thank you, thank you for enlarging my territory. 
Father, thank you for placing your hands upon me at all times. Father, thank you for keeping me away from evil. Father, thank you for not allowing me to cause any pain. Guys, go out and have a wonderful week. Remember, protect your environment by keeping your eyes on Jesus, okay? We love you guys. We'll see you on Tuesday for Bible study. God bless you. All right, so this is what I want to share. Um